Wheat Wheat Don't Tell Me is recorded in front of a live brewery audience the third Thursday of every month at Mountain Lakes Brewing Company in downtown Spokane, Washington. We we don't tell me you're at Mountain Lakes with all of your friends. We we don't tell me you're gonna start talking about craft beer again. We're cracking wise on random craft beer news. Hanging out with brewers, owners, and monsters doing interviews. It's the wee wee shows, the wee wee shows, the wee wee shows, the wee wee show. From the brew house stage at Mountain Lakes Brewing Company in downtown Spokane, Washington, this is Wheat Wheat Don't Tell Me, Spokane's craft beer live audience show and podcast. You know, Chris, some people say the brewing industry is a lot of work, but me, I don't know what they're complaining about. I say I'm on the Davy train with biscuit wheels. I'm Dave Basaraba, and here, as always, is your host, Chris Sindra. Well, thank you, Dave, and thank you, everybody. Let's break some bread and drink some beer, shall we? Yes, we've got Teddy Benson from Spokane's very own The Grain Shed as our special guest tonight. (laughs) Welcome, Teddy. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. And it's good to have you. It's It's the most prestigious thing I've been asked to do in a long time. (laughs) Man, your life is bad. (laughs) Unexciting, not bad. <laughs> Unexciting. Well, as always, I am joined by Dave Basabraba and Tim Hilton of Mountain Lakes Brewing Company. Well, t- Dave and Tim, what's the latest news with Mountain Lakes Brewing Company and the Spokane craft beer scene? Well, Chris, I think the most exciting thing is that we're getting ready for another collaboration beer with uh, friends from the Grain Shed, including the guy sitting right next to me, and, uh, and Bellwether. So that's going to be fun. And that's happening when? What do you? We're gonna brew on, uh, let's say, the second of August, and we're Tuesday the second. I think this is the is this the fourth incarnation of the walled off? I think it's actually or five, like the fifth or sixth. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. we lost one in there. We did but not I, serve yeah. one. One never made it to the lips of right. the public. It, it made that's it into right. the sewer system and really became some good organic. Some veget- of that ended up in my belly. Uh, <laughs> Always, it was. Free. Yeah, 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 that's right. It was bad, but it was free. Chris, we're also getting ready for uh, Lester Cup Summer 22. Uh, that'll be fun. Uh, August 1 to September 15th, we've got German beers, and uh, the lineup sounds pretty good. Um, I've heard a Munich Hellas out there. I've heard a, a, a Radler. Uh, uh, it's these guys. Yep, that's us. Mount Lakes is brewing a Radler, and it will be the winner, so... Uh, it I'll is Mountain Lakes, after all. I mean, come on. You guys organize it, and you win more than anyone else. Right. I mean, it doesn't take a mathematician to know how that works. Yeah. We've got a Kolsch from the honorable, honor, the honorable mentions of uh, Grainshed. I say honorable mention because I, I think now that... I think they're due to win now, actually. I mean, I just need to make better beer. And we'll yeah. call it a day. Well, I think it was honorable to mention him because he's here. That's right. That's true. So That's now, true. and with that, and I don't want to be like a Debbie Downer, but are you the last remaining brewery to need to win the Leicester Cup? I mean, is it a need? But yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah, maybe you just don't want to. No, like, I mean, that's why I keep making what I make. Oh, uh, yeah, you're like, fuck the cup. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's not as much fun if you do it the other way. Yeah, but I you... Mean, I don't put fruit extra. But I don't like it. that you were profiteering off of that. You made those fuck the cup stickers and you sold them. <laughs> I mean, I got to send my kid to college. Come on, man, back <laughs> off. So now, and you also are, uh, in August, you've uh, kind of formalized a fundraising event. So tell us a little bit about that as well. Yeah, so um, we did an event at the Women's Club of Spokane up here on the Lower South Hill, about uh, Ninth Avenue. And uh, we were just happened to be pouring there, and they were talking about some hardships that they were going through post-COVID. And we thought, what better way to help them out than to uh, do a brew fest? So August 14th, it's a Sunday. Uh, you can get your tickets on our website or our Facebook. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got... Um, nine other breweries coming in with us, uh, all bringing something awesome. Uh, we have Carrie Marguerite and the 76 local band donating their time for a two-hour set. We're going to have all kinds of brats and pretzels and other beer-related uh, food items. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun time. And you get a collector glass. And you've got how many breweries, did you say? Ten. Ten. Yep. That's amazing. And they're all bringing something awesome? 
Yeah, except for the grain shit. I was going to uh, say, is grain shit not going? <laughs> no, we were just going to go to Total Wine, and we were just going to get some no lie or something like that and just bring it and yep. show up. It'd be, it, it's <laughs> stumbling distance from my house, so it's perfect. It's like, perfect. I can, I can literally stumble just home. Just grab a quick keg of kokanee. Dang right. Run on down. It's going to be beautiful. No, I promise you the grain shit will bring something just, awesome. I know the good bushes to like pass out in on the way home, so I'm set. <laughs> it's perfect. Well, to start the show off, we like to ask important people who work in the craft beer industry questions about what they do and how they do it. It's called Not My Beer. Please welcome tonight's Not My Beer guest from the Grain Shed, head brewer, Teddy Benson. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Well, we are excited to have you. It is good to finally have you on the show as we had our fill of Joel Williamson earlier in the game. He's cool and all, but I mean, at some point you just got to like pull the plug, He's right? He's so like 2019. And yeah. we're in 2022. Exactly. Right. That's, so. the, that's the year? That's pretty okay, much perfect. it. Just making sure. So. Um, so to start things off, I thought, you know, when I think of the Grain Shed, I think of many things. You've got lots of moving parts. You're a bakery. You're a brewery. Uh, you're kind of part of a farm co-op. I think people think of Link Foods when they think of Grain Shed. They think of Link Malt when they think of Grain Shed. Those are just a few of them. Tell us a little bit about how and when the Grain Shed got started and the connection to kind of all of those parts you got going on. Yeah, I mean, it. you know, I, I don't want to use the word, like, incestuous, but it's a little incestuous, like, between us and Link link at this point. So, yeah, so, I mean, the Grain Shed, we have been around. We opened in... 2018. We opened in June of 2018 and really actively started working on this project in 2016. Um, and Joel, that you mentioned previously, is one of the founding owners of Link Foods and Link Malt at the same time. He was the, you know, the original maltster at Link, kind of, really, I mean, really was the, was the genesis of all of Link Malt and what that looks like. Um, and the, the, you know, the founding of Link Malt really kind of triggered us and and you know we so so initially myself and Joel we were home brewers together Joel's my brother-in-law I've known Joel for good god like 15 years something like that speaking of incestuous yeah I know right I mean he married my sister come on man pull it together <laughs> um but it's better you know, than you marrying your sister well I mean <laughs> this isn't Kentucky let's go let's you know let's move on um but no, yeah, so we, we've been homebrewing, or we homebrewed, you know, starting in about 2018, 2019, because that was an easier way for me to get beer than, you know, actually buying it as an underage individual, so we just decided to make it. Um, but, you know, through that whole process, you know, Joel went to graduate school, started Link Foods, and then about four years into Link, not even that long, he, they, they recognized they needed something in uh, the off-season of Link, that was a value added piece. And he, you know, because of our interest in brewing, he wanted to uh, venture into malt, pitch that to, you know, all of Link's board and all their farmer owners and things like that, and kind of got the go ahead to, you know, go deeper into that, went to malt school up in Winnipeg, and then ultimately said, great, this is going to be something that, that, you know, I think we can add some value to our organization, and did that. They, they went after it, you know, he went and got his education, and then immediately coming back from that, he uh, and Link started going through some pretty significant fundraising to try and, you know, earn, you know, gain some money to, to buy a, a, you know, roughly $550,000 malting system, which was their first system that they still use, and got that around and, and you know, started trying to produce malt and had a lot of tears and things like that initially, and, and uh, you know, a lot of frustration and learning. Um, but every single batch of malt that, that was functional, we, Joel and I personally brewed so that he could take that out to breweries and say, hey, here's what, you know, here's what English Pale is, you know, Baroness English Pale is, here's what Baroness Pilsner is, here's what, you know, whatever else this might be. And the more and more we did that with these local malts and things, we, we recognized we want to do more. We, we don't want to homebrew anymore. We want to, we want to take a, a different step and, and really start brewing um, professionally. And kind of at the same time, we, we met two other pivotal people in the starting of the Grain Shed. So one of those people is Sean Thompson Duffy, who's our, um, our baker. So he's the, the founding baker of the Grain Shed. Um, and at the time, he was running, for those of you that remember, Boozy's Bakery up at Luna um, when they still operated a full bakery off of that. Um, and at the time, Luna had just been sold, and the new owners really didn't want to continue with the bakery, so Sean was looking to um, 
to open up his own bakery. And almost at the exact same time, we met Don Sherman, um, who grows uh, some really, really unique grains that we focus on a lot. I know Mountain Lakes uses as well. Um, so that's their, you know, Don's Scots Bear, Purple Egyptian, Red Russian, Sonora. Um, some really unique grains, really fantastic grains. Um, and he, we, we met him at the same time and uh, kind of connected the four of us together. So Sean, Joel, myself, and Don, and said, okay, what can we, you know, why, why do two separate businesses? Don wanted a brewery. Um, Joel and I wanted a brewery. Sean wanted a bakery, wanted to use Don's grains. So we said, let's just do it as one thing. Let's, you know, go forward with that, see what that looks like and did just that and kind of worked towards what our business plan would look like, what that business model would look like, sort of what our offerings would be, and started, you know, looking at where could we open this up and found some different locations and things like that. Initially, we were actually thinking we might go into Kendall Yards and decided that wasn't right, the right fit. And at the same time, we found our location up in South Perry. Um, some friends of ours owned the building um, and they were they were going to use it as just some office space for themselves, their contractors, and we said, hey, can we do it instead? And so they said, yep, and we built an oven in there, a stone, you know, a, a brick oven um, was hand-built in there for us, and, and, you know, after that, it's kind of the rest is history. We opened up, we used probably 97% link malt, and, you know, our, our goal is to utilize local grains for for bread, beer, pastries, and everything else in between. Right. And so then the, the, that kind of set the precedent then for using local farmers. So everything you did in the beginning was having Don bring in grain. That grain was then malted. That malt then went into your beer. But his grain also was utilized for the bread making too? Yeah. 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 There was a lot of crossover there. So, uh, yeah. I mean, originally our, our main offerings of beer were our Purple Egyptian, which is still probably our best seller. Um, God, I think Scott's Bear was the next grain that we got from Don and then Red Russian um, wheat. And we just continued to use those grains pretty heavily, adding in Baroness when it came on board. And Baroness was the first thing that, that Joel malted. So we used Baroness for non-land race grain things. But yeah, and then on the flip side of that, our, our ba Sean uses uh, a lot of Don's grains, Turkey Red being a grain that we don't use for brewing, but is used for for uh, for baking. He, lot of lot of turkey red, a lot of Sonora white wheat, which is now one of the malts that we use a lot of as well. Um, some red Russian, decent amount of purple Egyptian, despite it being a barley. It's a, a hullus barley. It's a self self threshing barley, so it's can still be used for baking. It's really nice, but um, yeah. So we there's a lot of crossover. Right. Um, I think the only grain, I guess there are two grains now that we use of Don's for baking that we don't use for brewing, and that's the turkey red wheat, and then um, a newer newer wheat that Don has called Eden, which is supposedly the the wheat that was grown in the Garden of Eden has a really long history back to the back to the Fertile Crescent. And things oh wow! Like, that. like so, Ad, Adam was Adam and Eden. Man, he was, they were wow. out there. Through, you know, they had a scythe and everything. It was that's amazing. Crazy. I heard they they, they were harvesting they themselves. Covered themselves in hop leaves is what I understand. You know, that's not saying much for Adam. Big. <laughs> Poor guy. Well, the, the hop leaf is kind of bigger. I mean, the cones. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, I guess the leaves. The are leaves are large. The, the leaves cone are big. Small. The cones. Yeah. No, but, not, yeah. not the cone. <laughs> not the cone. Not the cone. Well, unless That's it's like you know, my chinooks are big. They might hide. You know, <laughs> That's one hell of a chinook. <laughs> it's. I kind of want to see your farm, I think but at the same time, I Tim think would be safe weird. with it. We would not. But. Um, yeah. Could you get the original apple? Yeah. From the Garden of Eden. <laughs> I mean, cool. we'll, we'll that's a little bit more interesting than I think the wheat. We'll I think invoice it's, for it's, it. It was a cosmic crisp. It was. That's what it I was, was told. <laughs> cosmic crisp. Yeah, absolutely, that's absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so then, you know, that's what attracted me when I heard about uh, Grain Shed. I was like, wow, this is really cool. Uh, an actual brewery in the Northwest focusing on grain, not this hyper you know, traction we have to hops, which is kind of what we're known for. And so that's what attracted my wife and I to actually come to your brewery first. So with that, though, you, you talk about kind of this nepotistic connection. So obviously it is because, you know, you're 
a brother-in-law of Joel. But there had to be a starting point prior to brewing. What did you do, and then how did you get into brewing? What was your life before the nepotistic advantage that you had of knowing Joel Williamson? Yeah, that's a great question. Because no, I remember I, I applied to brew at the Grain Shed. I think and Joel was we like... We wanted legitimate candidates. I'm sorry. I'm joking. I'm I joking. think Joel was like, I think I got to get my brother-in-law a job or the family is going to hate me. I mean, I dropped out of college by that point and it was, you know, it was just, it was yep. a lot of, I mean, I, I got my name changed from Teddy to just disappointed face. Like yep. that's just <laughs> what it was. It was, it was, this no is good. our son emoji. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, so I, I, before, before I was brewing or, you know, I guess professionally brewing, um, I was an elementary school teacher. For, for five years um, up in the Mead School District. So, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed that. Absolutely loved that. Didn't leave that because I didn't enjoy it. Just had this great opportunity to go and continue helping build this you know, organization that we all founded together. Um, but, yeah, we, when we started brewing, I, yeah, like I said, I, I had just dropped out of college and, and uh, it, you know, school was not the thing for me at that time and came back and was working minimum wage jobs to really find that motivation to go back to school. And, and, uh, but at the time, you know, we were brewing beer and then, uh, you know, pretty quickly after that, I realized that I wanted to go and be a teacher and went to Eastern, got my undergraduate there and immediately started teaching after that. And then got my master's degree pretty quickly after I started teaching up at Whitworth in gifted education. Um, and about the same time, well, I, I taught for, you know, a couple of years after that and then, um, yeah, saw this opportunity as Joel was moving to Portland for a couple of years and we needed a beer program to continue. I said, well, great, this is an opportunity for me to, to step away, do this for a little while at the very least and, and did that and, um, and here I am now. Um. So you, uh, we talked about your focus on utilizing grain. You talked about Don, um, that, that it was one of your first farmers to come in. But like, tell us a little bit about more of your original beers that you brewed and then those, uh, those farmers and grains that kind of came involved to, to help celebrate this region of grain that we have. Yeah, absolutely. So we, you know, the, the first malt that was ever produced at Link was, um, you know, those of you that brewers around, you'll, you'll remember the... Uh, the Baroness Crystal Forty, um, that was, uh, you know, is a is a caramelized malt completely unintentionally because the producers of their first malt system had no idea what the hell they were doing, and so uh, midway through the um, the the germination or yeah the germination and kiln the the whole kilning germination vessel flipped upside down uh -huh. and so anaerobically started fermenting all of this grain in it. So I remember getting this call from Joel on like a Saturday or something like that, and he is just like distraught, fit to be tied, because it's like $8,000 worth of grain. Maybe not that, you know, $6,000 worth of grain that he's, you know, their first try at malting, and they're just, he's just like, I'm going to have to dump this whole thing. Like, it's, this is terrible. Like, well, I'm going to lose all of this money first try out. Because the the system, yep, wasn't wasn't set up or you know didn't take into account that once you you know soak all, five tons worth of grain in water, it gets a really heavy, right? <laughs> and and then instead of you know they didn't design that in to address it, and so you know a lot of issues happened, and essentially this malt system flipped upside down, had no airflow for twenty you know for twelve hours had some caramelization that wasn't supposed to be there. And, and you know, as Joel kind of was processing through this, he's like, no, I'm, I'm going to yeah, at least try to get something out of it. And ended up with this Crystal 40 that I, I know at least a half dozen breweries still that want that malt back because it was so unique. It was so right. delicious. It was so flavorful. Um, but wasn't a, or, you know, wasn't, wasn't, you know, he was just trying to make a pale malt. Yeah, it's but not a, a significant part of your grain bill. Like, I just need eight ounces yep. of crystal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you know, the first time we brewed with it, I think we brewed with, like, 50% of it, which was really, really overpowering. Right. But it, like, the, because the flavor was so good. But, yeah, so Baroness was that first one. You, you, you had some... We used your crystal, yeah, the Crystal 40. And uh, the other one that was a, a mistake of sorts, I think, was that, that uh, Munich 60. 
Yes, it, it was another. It was actually, I think that was supposed to be the the tr one of the trials of remaking the Crystal yeah. Forty, which was phenomenal. Uh, oh yeah, it's and just, now we want it back. And it, yeah, and how do you gone. do it? How do you how do you recreate a mistake? Exactly. Yeah, and so you know, initially right. that really we just had a Joel was producing Baroness. Pretty quickly, he produced Cash Up Wheat from from um, Joseph's Granary, which is the farm that Baroness comes from. Um, and had a whole lot of issues with it. And then, uh, you know, Don's malts, like I said, the, the purple Egyptian was a pretty early malt. Scott's Bear, another one of Don's grains, was a pretty early malt. Red Russian wheat was another early malt from Don. And then the other ones, like I said, yeah, Baroness, both Baroness, uh, the Crystal 40 unintentionally, a Baroness Pilsner and a Baroness Pale really fast. Um, and then I think an English pale as well, a Baroness English pale. So as the well. Bill, Baroness come from Bill Myers. Bill Myers, right, yeah. Okay. Yep, Joseph's Granary down in Colfax. Um, same with the Cash Up, which is just malted as a white wheat, uh, pale white wheat. Um, and then the other one that came out pretty quickly was um, Triticale from MJW out in, well, formerly MJW out in Lind, Washington. James Wall, who is you know the namesake of our our um, off the wall. And what was the original? Walled off because walled it was off. done. It was COVID. done during COVID. That's we were, right. We we're That's like, right. we all have this grain. Let's just yes. make a batch together. That's right. And then we were, uh, then we were feeling frisky, and we're like, we're gonna call it off the wall because we're all tired of being in quarantine. Yeah. So and then and that was the van's take. Yeah, that's yes. when, and that's we're still van, waiting for the lawsuit. Yeah, in. where's the cease and desist? Like I really was hopeful. Oh, I'm that just that hoping that they'll faster. just partner with us and we'll take that yeah, that perfect. beer across the country. Perfect. That's They're great. right when Peter Siegel calls. We'll also get maybe that call. Yep. Let's go maybe right. Pe maybe Peter can call vans for yeah, us. Yeah, and he's be like, hey, let's sue these guys right at the well, same time. Well, I mean, time. Springsteen's got to call at some point for a uh, Hazy Davy, right? Like, yeah, we discontinued that one because Bruce and I are tight now. Uh, yeah, so those were, I mean, our original beers, like, I, I mean, I guess I can look back at our brewing history, but I mean, Purple Egyptian Please was... Please don't. Let's just, yeah, come on. <laughs> hey, hey, you know, I mean, it's, it's right there. But no, I mean, Purple Egyptian was, I think, our first beer that we professionally brewed um, because we, we originally had a small amount of Purple Egyptian barley from Don malted by Skagit um, up, in, up in Skagit Valley. Um, and and realized that it was something different and something. And that special. was named after a cold uh, pyramid worker. Is yes, that right? Exactly. Exactly. He's a purple Egyptian. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He was actually a distant relative of Prince, and that's like yeah. where it came from. But yeah. Not so. Yeah. No. I mean, it's it, yeah. It's a you know, it's a total sham. It's actually Ethiopian, not not Egyptian. I, oh. I mean, I'm telling all the dirty secrets right now. Don't don't tell Don that wow, I'm sharing. Wow. That's this, like but. way over you know Egypt. And, you know, fun you know, fact. It's not purple. Eastern part it, of Africa. Uh, it, you know, if you squint, it is. Back off. Come on, man. The beer Come wasn't on. purple. I, it, you I poured it, and I was like... You know, we tried to make a purple beer one time because that was the number one question that we always got when we talked about it. It was like, oh, great, so the beer's going to be purple? I'm like, I wish, but no. So we tried to add blueberries, and it was like vaguely purple, but it was you know, not yeah, really, not gonna do not it, really yeah. so much. But yeah, no. Uh, fun fact, purple barleys, black barleys, originate, there are two places that they came from in the world, and... The Nile River Valley in Ethiopia is one, and then the Himalayas is the other. Wow. The Nile River, the African varieties are better. So no Ethiopia's got coffee and purple barley. Barley. Yeah, man. And wow. the purple barleys are actually like, they're, they're more commonly used for like eating because they're really high in beta glucans, which are apparently really good for your heart and really a pain in the ass to use in brewing. Wow. So yeah. that's because of the, the hull, because they have no husk? No, I mean, the, just the nature oh. of the grain itself. Oh, okay. Yeah, are really high in these beta glucans, which are really good for heart health. Oh. So, and yeah, make it a nightmare to brew. And they taste like grape nuts. They taste which like Which John Denver told us back in the 70s was good for your heart. Literally so. tastes like grape nuts. It's yeah. fantastic. John Denver knew it all. Yeah. Yeah. Teddy, you said that was a fun fact. And None of that was fun. None of that at all. You're a professor. Like Himalayan you and Egyptian. You do boring shit like for who, a living. Who gives like a you shit? Think, <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so those were our original beers. I mean, Purple Egyptian was a really, really, you know, that was, I think, the first. Scott's Bear, 100% Scott's Bear, was pretty quickly to follow. Red Russian was pretty quickly to follow. I think that we did like a... You know, originally we were we were really high minded, and we said like, "Oh, we're not going to fit styles at all." And so we're like, "We're just going to we're going to call beers what's our, what's in them." So we're like, "This is Baroness Simcoe or Baroness Centennial," right? Which don't get me—I mean, you know, we made some good beers, but people were like, 
this is bullshit. What well, is this? But then you, when you first started, I remember going and you had like leftover bread. Yeah, beers, and actually, right? I really remember? miss doing that because now, now that we're at the steam plant, I don't have a smaller system to brew on, and I can't collect enough beer before or enough spare bread before it rots to be able to make right so y- you tell us about you used to do that though right that yeah. would come out and you take all the leftover yeah. bread and you'd brew a batch of beer and it was like leftover bread volume yeah. one yeah there's this re- there's this russian beverage called kvass which was is made with bread or sometimes beets but the beet one's gross um <laughs> but so we're like great let's try to recreate kvass in our way, and so we called it the waist loaf for, you know, it's Wasted funny. Loaf, that's what it was. Because, A, it's, you know, the heels and ass ends of bread, but it's also, you know, you're getting wasted, you're drinking, you know, it's fun. And so we... Oh, every I see what sing- you did there. Yeah. There we go. Was that a fun fact? That, that was. was a good one. That was spelling. Oh, it was a little bit better. Okay, perfect. I'm, we're <laughs> yeah. going for full fun at some point during this conversation yeah, today. But yeah, we did so, a wasted loaf uh, collab a couple of few years ago. I think we did. We oh, it was, be- it was before Mountain. Teddy. I think that was a Joel uh, time. And uh, Teddy oh, wasn't there for be. Grain Mountain. No, he was not. No, I, I, I. He was still a teacher. I, I think, was still at that teaching time. at that point. Yeah. But I love Grain Mountain. Grain Mountain was a great beer. It was. That well, was, we invited them like over. Joel came over with some grains and he brought this shit ton of bread. We're like, yep. He brought a trash can. Oh yeah, man. Don't try Full to pawn up your, your shitty wasted. bread on us. What yeah, the hell? yeah. But and then you brewed with it, and you're like, oh my god, this is actually good. It this made such good. a full-bodied yeah. beer. It, it does. Was, yeah, really it was really good. good. Yeah, it, yeah. So yeah, we did waste love. I think we got through like 14 iterations of it on our smaller system. But yeah, it was a ton of fun. I, it I was liked like, number 11 and number seven. Perfect. Perfect. I I think number 11 was a rye. Focused one that was really great. Oh, yeah. I'm making this definitely. up, but you know, it seemed like a yeah, ride. It was that, definitely. Or, or number seven was, but yeah, no, I, every single one was different, and we just were like, great, we're just gonna hold leftover bread and do something different. And it was our opportunity to do something like completely off the rails that people ended up really liking for the most part. I mean, I don't think that we had any of those that were like really foul. So now you've got big things going at Grain Shed. You started out in South Perry. You still have that location, but you don't brew there. You started brewing for a little bit out with Bellwether. But then recently, you've now worked with Steam Plant. And so tell us about your um, progression to moving and brewing at Steam Plant. Yeah, I, we, we, as we were going, it was you know, more and more obvious. Like, I, I wanted, personally, I wanted something more than I was able to do there, just with two tanks and you know, four other breweries. I wanted to be able to do a little bit more than I was, um, and I really couldn't focus on on brewing at that point. I, you know, maybe brew once or twice a month, maybe if I was lucky on the ten barrel system. Probably more like once a month, and and I wanted to be able to do more than that. And so at the same time, we saw, you know, this was during COVID. We noticed that the steam plant closed down, and heard some rumors that the steam plant was being sold by Avista, and started racking our brains about like, okay, well, who in Spokane has the money to be able to buy the entirety of the steam plant? And we, you know, kind of ran through like, Tim well, Hilton, Dave, Dave Basaraba, and then and like, we, George we checked, Brett. Yeah, we checked with <laughs> those two and they Brett. said no, and George didn't respond. Was it more than a hundred bucks? 150. Uh, we're out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's that's big, but you know, so yeah, we we kind of recognize like, oh, this is going to happen, and it's going to be, you know, there's not a lot of people that means you know, maybe the Barbieri's that might buy it, or maybe uh, uh, it's the the family that owned the Davenport, and we were looking, and they weren't doing it, and so we kind of like, I think it's probably going to be Jerry Dicker and GVD that that bought it, and I had a, a, a friend that worked for Jerry for a while, and um, had him reach out and and say, hey, we're thinking this might be you guys putting in on this and and um, sure enough it was and we're able to kind of make that connection and, and went in to say hey we would be uh, interested in operating this this brewery um, not knowing exactly what that looks like uh, you know they're they're you know we we produce at the steam plant but we do not we do not operate their tap room or their their bar space at all so um, so we said you know well let's see what this can look like and you know as they were transitioning and, and going through with the purchase and everything like that, we didn't hear anything for months and months and months, and we kind of wrote it off. But you know, kind of at the same time, we said, we either need to make our own production space 
we need to either or or find a you know a larger production space for ourselves that's already existing, or just like discontinue our brewing program in general, which we didn't want to do, um, and and kind of we're starting to get into like okay, well, great, let's work on building out our own you know from scratch brewing production location that all that, and then we got this contact back you know after after several months from GVD that said. Great. Let's figure out a lease. Let's see what this can look like between both of us that makes it mutually beneficial. And then we were able to, we finally got our licensing in mid-November of 2021 and started, you know, screwing up beers for a while. And and until we finally got, you know, I finally got one that I'm like, holy shit, this worked. Right. I made a beer that I'm okay with finally. And what's the system you have now at a steam plant? It's a real old 10 barrel system from NFI. Um, which is an old producer from Canada, an old brewing, produ- brewing production um, equipment producer from Canada. Um, but yeah, ten barrel system, steam, um, which is kind of a different different beast than what I was used to. You know, Bellwethers is a direct fire um, natural gas system, which you know everything's a little bit different. And so it was, like I said, you know, trying to figure out all these different you know different quirks and nuances. So now all of the beer at Steam Plant, when you go there, is your beer, which is really cool. Fourteen, of, or sorry, ten of their fourteen taps are ours. Ten of the fourteen maybe, taps, maybe a little, you know, like Wiggles. And the others bit, are seltzers. Yeah, right. Um, Coors Light. <laughs> Coors Light. Uh, no, they didn't want to actually buy any like domestic, large domestic beer. Oh, so you but, have to produce that for them too. So Longboard was their like theirs, oh, and, and then I'm like, yeah. can I make? This you can make a lager like, as good as that yeah, or better. Exactly. Yeah. So I brewed that, and that's our like house beer now. When oh, Hillier opens it's like up, shortboard but, lager. Yeah, shortboard. Uh, you know exactly. Shortboard short lager. plank. It's short plank lager. Shortboarding is a thing. Yeah. Yeah, short yeah. Exactly. plank. So no, yeah. They. I mean, the other things are like a sour, which I'm not a sour brew. I mean, it's just not my jam. Um, I don't even remember what the other ones are. Things that I don't want to make. I got you. For the most part. So, but yeah, that's that's cool. And then you've got all your beer going to the grain shed as well. Yep, grain shed, so. you know, wholesale accounts around town. Right. Um, and, and then, then you're then, canning, because yep, you do canning. Canning, um, which is awesome. We had our first, and I mean, at this point, only canning run at the steam plant, which was interesting because we have to, you know, the, the, the steam plant's brewing, you know, brewery is pretty tight. It's not yeah, you exactly. can. When you go to the bathroom, you look through the window, exactly. and there it is. Exactly. I was, there. I am. I went also to t- going to the bathroom, but people aren't supposed to see that. Yeah, you know, I, so I went to, to to meet Teddy uh, like what a week ago, yeah. and then I went and parked in the back alley and went in there, and I'm like, I know you can see this brewery. Where is it? And it's like literally just. In, but oh, it's yeah. a it's a pretty darn tight little awesome system. It is, and yeah. it, it it's a really tight space, but it is really efficiently used space. Yeah. So it's you know it's there there are three brights and six uh, sorry three fermenters and six bright tanks in you know really. It's a smaller space than this that we're in right now. It's right. I think, I think it's only like. A thousand square feet, something like that, right. for an entire ten barrel system, three fermenters, six brights, a keg washer, a cooler. Like it's pretty impressive. Um, which is which is good. It works really well. Um, so with that then, there's like grain sheds got big things on the horizon. Not only are you with steam plant, but you've got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, seems like you've got Irons in the fire, kind of all over. So, what else should folks know about what you're doing and what the future of the grain shed will look like? We got more irons in the fire than we should. Um, yeah, no, I, I was telling people this yesterday. Like, we're just finding every way to like give ourselves anxiety that we possibly can. So, yeah, we have, uh, you know, aside from now the steam plant, we have three other expansions that are happening within hopefully the next year and a half. We we've purchased the um, old steady flow slash old river city slash old golden handle tap room over on second and cedar well between second and third and cedar um that we're just waiting you know we have to get our food our food figured out there um and get our licensing completed before we can open that place up which should be pretty quick that should be august like you better get it done by october if that isn't august we're up shit's creek yeah like, yeah we got to get that shit done um, and then we are opening a place in Hilliard, which will be specifically a restaurant. We will have some, we'll have like maybe two to four taps there of cans there and shit like that. But for the most part, that place is going to be a restaurant. Um, and, that's, and that's uh, Mexican. 
It, it's going to be all over the place. It's going to be comfort food. Uh, yeah, what 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 did the uh, what did our our chef Victor says? Uh, international redneck cuisine. Oh, yeah, but, and mean, it's called Locos. Locos. L O C O S. Locos. Yeah, like locos. crazies, which means like crazies, crazies or locomotives because we're in Hilliard, which is an old rail yard. So oh. multiple places. That's you know, a bit deep. We're not Doctor Hilton. But uh, you know we're 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 trying. Yeah, That's pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah, we're trying. Good. I mean, he is wearing a Red Sox hat, so what can I really say? But you know, well, no response. Okay, cool. We're just going <laughs> to keep on going with that. Um, yep. So Locos, uh, that was we're we're opening that place um, in uh, our good friends over at Bellwether, Dave and Bree, that own Bellwether. They um, bought this big old beautiful building up in Hilliard and are renovating it as sort of a commons space. Has anyone ever seen that Tom Hanks movie, Money Pit? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway, go on. Oh, come on. Anyway, go on. <laughs> Shit, now I feel like I'm getting made fun of. Yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> well, welcome no. to the club, friend. Perfect, it's perfect. <laughs> We're just all here, Good right? Good to have a buddy. <laughs> No, um, I just mean that Dave and Bree bought this amazing building, and then every turn. Seems oh, money to be pit! Like, I mean, it is a money pit. Holy for, yeah. crap! Yeah, an but engineer, an engineer for this, an engineer for that, design dude, a railing for that, put the another wackest thing. I, I mean, couldn't it, believe you know. it. I was like, well, you just need some pipes and electricity, right? Nope, yep. nope. Well, and it's it's worse because it's this old building that is being, and we kind of ran into this with our. I, I guess it's a little bit, but yeah, it's. Yeah, this old, beautiful, like, 1910, um, it's an old, the United Hilliard Bank was what it was originally. Um, don't know when that stopped being a That's bank. That's why they're having to put so much money into it. Yeah, exactly. The money's gone, and now, like, the ghosts of the building just need more. Sucking it's it. It's hungry. Hungry. So can it, we go there next week to get beer? I've, I've seen kegs there. It won't oh, be my beer, nice. but, like, there are kegs there. They'll be warm. Bring a party tap. And it'll be bellwether, but, you know, like, you know, whatever. So, yeah, no, we, we um, yeah, we, we were, originally it was September, late September. I mean, actually, it was, like, February, this last February. That's but. so weird. Like, breweries usually open right on time. It's oh, yeah, so right on time and under budget. And, and, and the construction and licensing well, never... Well, restaurants are the same. Under budget, yeah. everything goes smoothly. That's right. Really simple. And like, it's easy to get staff. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Like, and everything's no great on day one, right, when it opens. 100%. Yeah, everything's perfect. Everything is smooth. Wow. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, this is wow. weird. We didn't expect this at all. Yeah, and so, yeah, so after Hilliard, then we are, like, spending all of our money. Well, let me, ref- let me rephrase. We're spending a whole bunch of money that we don't have out in Liberty Lake. Somebody else's money. Other people's money that we're on the hook for. So. Yeah, and so there's a big development uh, out there, which yeah. we, I bumped in today accidentally going out to George Gee Kia oh, yeah. to drop my car off, and then you had talked to me about it. And I'm like, oh, here it is. You saw it? Good. I, I did. I any. drove I through it accidentally because of the detour and the road construction. But Perfect. so that's was it cool? Pretty, yeah, it's very cool. There's right. a splash pad. There's Sweet. ice cream. There's uh, what? Hello, sugar donuts. I think everything. I don't that know I want. everything except for a fine uh, dining restaurant and a, and a grocery store, flour mill. And yes, gro- perfect. I think that we're going to fit that niche beautifully. So tell us about that. That's yeah. Cool. So this that that one's going to be the one that we like, you know, really gamble big time on. But yeah, so we're opening up, uh, you know, opening a place out in Liberty Lake in the. Um, Greenstone community out there. Greenstone did Kendall Yards in downtown, or well, north of downtown Spokane. Um, I can't remember what that community is called. It's like River something. Yeah, that's what. Yeah. Yeah, so Why Stone. shouldn't we call another thing yeah. River in yeah, this exactly. town? It's perfect. River I Rock, mean, River Stone, River Bend. I mean, River at this Front. point, we're leaning into that curve so much we're about to fall over. So you know, Riverside. We're on this side Riverside. of it, and then the other side is the is r- also river. Riverside. Yeah. Oh, it's you're not, not ri- on the Riverside. You're on the. See, we were lied to. We you, leased this space sight unseen. You and we were, thought we were river. You're on the Sprague side. Man. It's no good. <laughs> yeah, so that place will be a fine dining restaurant, a massive stone milling flour operation, a wholesale bakery, a commissary kitchen, and then like a small like bakery retail sort of delicatessen style thing that, wow. that will be operating. Are you get, can you buy stock in you guys right now? You want to give us money? We'll make that happen. Oh, really? Really? I just put a lot of money into Bose because they're a sound investment. Jesus (laughs) Christ. Yeah, let's get an O on all of that. Fantastic. 
fantastic. <laughs> well, it has been wonderful talking with you about the great things happening at the Grain Shed. However, we have also invited you here tonight to play a little game we're calling Grain Shed Meat Beer Bread. Dave is, Dave is going to read you three questions related to the connection of beer and bread. Answer two of the three questions successfully, and you'll win a prize for one of our audience members. Free beer and a pint glass. Dave, who is Teddy playing for tonight? Drum roll. Chris M. Chris M. There he is, right in the front there. Front and center. Holy Chris smoke. M. Nice. We were talking to Chris earlier, and he is a pilot, uh, right? Flying for what airline? Can he say? say. He's not going to say. Because that's Southwest, probably. Yeah. Frontier. Come on. Spirit. (laughs) And so uh, we have a little quiz that we're going to give you. Are you ready to play, Teddy? I think so. All right. here Here is your first question. This beer was originally brewed as a more substantial beer to sustain the monks during lengthy fasts. It would later be dubbed liquid bread. What is the name of this style of beer? Can I phone a friend? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you you have one, you want to phone a friend. Do you have any? I mean, I mean, do you have one here is what I mean. Oh, yeah, sure. No, I mean, you know. Oh, man. Let's see. Liquid bread. Liquid bread. So it's Liquid it's bread. so I would think right. It's monks. Think about it. They're they're fortifying. We're talking about probably European. Belgian, probably. O- or, or German. Or German. German. They probably thing. talk like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold they're like, I'll be. Oh, it's the Austrians. I'll be Bach. I'll be Bach. I'll be Bach. Oh my God. Wait, 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 wait. I'll uh, be Bach. Um, ba- Bach. Da- da- Doppel? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Is it a doppelbach? It is a doppelbach. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Okay, I just have to get one more right. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I thought the clue you were doing was like Terminator, because it's an aider. It's a, it is. You could have a beer. Yeah. Yeah. Is it Gatorade? Is the Terminator? Oh, different Aider. Aider. Oh, oh was, my God. Sorry. That was Celebrator. Actually, that was actually because the script was written by a brewer, oh. and he was like Terminator. Terminator. You, I will make his his forever line be I'll it's, be Bach. Yeah. I'll be Bach. I'll be Bach. Couple Bach. If I was a beer, I'd be Bach. I'll be Bach. All right. Well, here's your second question. I'm ready. I what hope. ancient civilization described in the poem "Hymn to Ninkasi," the act of malting? Kilning and grinding barley and forming it into conical cakes to be baked and then added to hot water to create beer. Oh God, I know this. Yeah, it, we're talking about a kingdom. What was the or what was the? Yeah, yes. it's an ancient, an ancient civilization. civilization. Ancient civilization. Which is like yeah. Um, I mean, that's part. That's part of clue as well. You get water, grain, yeast, sum them together. In summary. Some so, so, oh man, mer- oh, no no no! Don't don't some. don't help me! I've got this. I I can connect these dots. Some 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 man! I'm just not summary. Some some summary. Oh some, oh oh! Summary. If someone oh, could just you know, someone... I know this guy named Ian. Yes. Wow. Sumer. Oh some s- ancient Sumerian. Yes. Uh, okay. Oh man. Ah, uh, wait! Wow, I got it. I was yeah. waiting. That's two out of three. But can we do the third. But we do the bonus because oh, uh, you know, it just shows your. Did somebody else get. I was just waiting for somebody to come off the street and give this guy a hand. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought, you know, as I always said, there's nothing like a good Sumerian. Yep. That's always. right. Thanks, always. Chris. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Here is your third question. I'm ready. Dave dropped his script. What German beer brewing law? Was in reality more Ryan of a... Ryan Heitzke boat. <laughs> no, well, let him finish the question. Never... Oh, my bad, sorry. <laughs> it's, it's a, I knew it's, this one, right? It's the one that came after that. Yeah. Ryan Heitzke yeah. boat. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't know. <laughs> Ryan Heitzke boat and zwei. Was and two. It's the right to brew beer in a Volkswagen. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Heitz Farfignugen. <laughs> so just for those... People listening, what German beer brewing law was in reality more of a bread baker's protection law to reserve wheat and rye strictly for the bread? What was it? Fun fact. Fun fact. Did you know that there in Germany there is a political party called the Beer Party? 
that they focus on beer focused legislation and protecting the beer industry. My people, specifically Reinheitsgebot, oh, which is the answer to the question that I rudely shouted at earlier. Well, Teddy, well you are correct. Hey, hey, Dave, how did Teddy do on the quiz? Pretty good. I would say three for three. That, I don't know. I wasn't a teacher. I didn't grade a lot of tests, but that seems like 100% to me. Can we no. ask Dr. Hilton? Yeah. Well, congratulations. C minus. C minus. That's because it's a state school. <laughs> well, congratulations, Chris. Teddy has one uh, UR free prize, which is free beer and a pint glass. Teddy, it has been a true pleasure talking with you and learning your story and the exciting things happening at the Grain Shed. Thank you so much for joining us on Not My Beer. Anytime. I believe me, I'll be back. Awesome. That wraps up this part of the show. We'll now take a break and be back in a few with Tim, Dave, and Teddy and an audience contestant for a little game we call Beer Limericks. Awesome. Woo! Welcome back to the brew house stage at Mountain Lakes Brewing Company in downtown Spokane, Washington. This is Wheat Wheat Don't Tell Me, Spokane's craft beer live audience show and podcast. I'm Dave Basaraba. Once again, your host, Chris Sindrick! Hey, well, thank you, Dave. And now the game where you have to listen for the rhyme. It's called Beer Limericks. We've asked an audience member to step up to the challenge. Hello and welcome. Tell us your name and a little bit about yourself. Hello. Uh, my name is Kevin. And uh, Hi, Kevin. Hey, nice, nice to be here with y'all. It's great. Uh, I am from Walla Walla, Washington. Land so nicely named it twice. Dude, don't even with me. Don't even. Is that like, is that like their slogan? I think it's everyone else's slogan for Walla Walla. And everybody who has lived there ever in their life says that that is the thing that they hear the most about their hometown. Exactly. That's wonderful. Thank you. They grow me. onions there, too, I hear. They do, absolutely. Yeah. Delicious. My Delicious. sister went to school in, at Whitman, so I, I know a little bit about Walla Walla. Witties. They are. Damn witties, man. Damn. They're obnoxious. You know, the, worst thing, the, the only thing worse than a witty is a twitty. That's fair. Do you know what a twitty is? No, but it sounds awful. It's a townie and a witty. So it's oh, somebody who, even worse. <laughs> double trouble. <laughs> it's somebody who graduated from my high school who ends up going to Whitman College. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Uh, hello and welcome, Kevin, to the show. Here's what we're going to do at this me. point. Uh, Dave is going to read you three beer-related limericks uh, with the last word or phrase missing from each. If you can fill in that last word or phrase correctly in two of the limericks, you will be a winner, which is free beer and a pint glass. Are you ready to play? No whammies, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. There you go. Big money. So, Kevin, in recognition of the grain shed... Your limericks tonight deal with, uh, deal with types of grain. Got it. Got it? All right. Well, here is your first limerick. A hefeweizen just can't be beat. In summer days that bring on the heat, a lemon may do. That's up to you. But it'll never be brewed without... Wheat. Oh! Oh, I am. He's a ringer. Did you see how quick he answered that, Teddy? I saw that. That yeah, was, that I was mean, geez, it took me like three minutes to get the first one. <laughs> that was quick. That was I'm very on quick. this. Well, defying the German purity laws of, uh, the, for royalty, you got to love the well-brewed Hefeweizen. So, uh, why, I, why I, was that, what was the purity law for royalty? Like, they, they weren't allowed to use wheat? It was they, just well, barley? Hops, water, and yeast? Yeah, and so that, that was that question earlier when they talked about it. Truly, the Rye and Heiskabot was about saving wheat for bread. That's right. And That's also right. rye. Yeah. And so then they didn't want to take that because beer was significantly popular. And if you put more wheat and rye into, into beer, then that takes it. It costs more, right, for yep. the people to, yep. to, uh, that are poor to yep. be able to have their breads. And so then that. But there was a stipulation that there could be beers brewed with wheat and rye for royalty. And so the Hefeweizen is kind of a royalty-based beer. Mm. 
Yeah, but then mm. now times have changed, and mm. they allow mm. that the Ryan Heights mm. Kabat's a little more flexible and all that kind of stuff. But Rod's like, who the fuck cares, Chris? <laughs> Shut up. Nobody cares about this trivial shit. Just get back to the business. Back to the questions. I gotta Chris. go. I gotta get back to the flash cube before nine thirty, <laughs> motherfucker. The flash cube curfew. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, here is your second limerick. Summer days call for time out on boats, or on rivers with something that floats. Crispy beers they may do, and a hazy may too, if you like the mouthfeel that comes with flaked. Oats. Whoa. Whoa. Damn. You are so much better than Teddy was. I God. think he's a plant. Yeah. I, I mean, think so legit. Too. Did you guys like take he, him back and tell him all the well, answers? He Jesus. came here with Matt Weiser, so maybe they I had a little background in brewing or well, let's just be honest here. Uh, Matt slipped me all the answers oh. before, so yeah. uh, <laughs> he's like, "Hey, it's a green shed matter until he talk about well, grains." Uh, you thought that was a handshake when I came in here earlier. That was oh. all the uh, all the answers yeah. right there in a card. Oh yeah, I, I see the sharpie on your palm. Oh yeah. Oh, do you see that there? <laughs> <laughs> That's that smear on his forehead that he, you know. <laughs> I'm really sweating over here, guys. <laughs> All right, well, here is your third limerick. Samantha once had a date with a guy who would give almost any beer a try. They had an IPA that she swears to this day was crisp and spicy because it had... Rye. What the... Whoa! Hey! It's like, it's... It's actually too fast for the show. Can we go back and act like... Yeah. Let me think two? about that for a second, guys. Okay, let me just think about all the it different... It rhymes with guy and try. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the thing is... Wheat. Like... Teddy! <laughs> well, uh, Dave, how did Kevin do on our quiz? Too good! We want to eliminate people I that are that quick. it was three good. It was... It was it oh, was you're right, it was three good. good. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> Wow. We've got a winner. Kevin, you've won our prize, free beer and a pint glass. We'll now take a break and be back in a few with Teddy, Dave, and Tim in a little game we call Brewers on Tap. Woo! Welcome back to the brew house stage at Mountain Lakes Brewing Company in downtown Spokane, Washington. This is Wheat Wheat Don't Tell Me. Spokane's craft beer, live audience show, and podcast. I'm Dave Basaraba, and as always, your host, Chris Sindre! Wow, that was like a delayed, sexy kind of, you know, thing. You're, ooh, I, I like that one. <laughs> I'll do it like that from now on. Jane, you taking notes on that? <laughs> And now for a game we call Brewers on Tap. Throughout the night, our audience members have had a chance to write down a question for one, a few, or all of our panelists. We've chosen a smackerel of them to ask our panel to tap into some of that brewer and owner knowledge. Let's get started, shall we? Is everybody ready? So the first question, and I'm, I'm guessing this could go to anybody, but maybe Teddy the most. Do you make happy bread? Happy bread? I don't. Oh, oh hoppy? Oh. Happy bread, yes. The bread is very happy. Hoppy bread, no. It the looked like happy hoppy. bread to me. I was thinking like weed, you know. <laughs> I mean, that type of happy bread, no. <laughs> so I guess two questions. Do you make happy bread? And do you also make hoppy bread? You know, two for two, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I should tell our big and like, hey, get, try this out. See what you can do. Could I mean, you? Could you? You could do people. a hop based bread, right? Yeah, I, I could I see mean, like an I could see like an Asiago focaccia, some sort of a focaccia. Honestly, like a focaccia with some with some hops would probably not be a bad deal. Yeah. All right, so uh, a question for you. Who has the best beard, Chris, Dave, or Teddy? That's a question. Wait, I don't uh, know. How do we answer? I mean, Chris Barton. Look yeah, at that Bar dude Barton over there. has the best beard. That's one handsome-ass yeah. man sitting <laughs> over there. Are you kidding me? And this is short for him. He's had much longer. Yeah, yeah. He, that's he, what I'm thinking. Uh, he nicked himself, and then he had to shave the whole thing. And then a week later, it was like... <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> like down to his knees. Yeah. Yeah. Three days later, he had to shave. Looked like his Dumbledore. Waist. It was Look amazing. Out. It's amazing. Sometimes he comes in and it's sh- it's so pointed. He turns his head and he injures someone. Here we go. What is your favorite beer right now? And it doesn't have to be local. So, what do you guys uh, favorite beers? I just had one that Brian brought me, but I can't remember where it was from. It was from. No, it was from where they filmed Twin Peaks. You brought it. Tom brought me a uh, Roslyn beer. Sorry. No, that's where they filmed, not Twin Peaks. It was where they filmed. Uh, um, uh, oh, Northern, yeah. Northern, uh, Northern Exposure. Northern Exposure. Yep. Oh, my Yeah, Northern, Northern Exposure. Exposure. Yep. Yeah. Tom, what was that beer? The Dark Lager. The Roslyn Dark Lager. Roslyn Dark Lager. I was like, holy crap, if I had a six pack of this, they'd all be gone. It was so good. Oh. Ah. And I had a friend. Um, I've never been to the Phillipsburg Brewery in Montana, and I've wanted to go there. And um, he brought back uh, the Otter Water Pale Ale. And I just had that hanging we out with We otter him. protect our water. Yeah, we otter. And, um, and it was really nice. But it was kind of cool because um, the guy who started that, I can't remember his name, he's an EW alum, mm-hmm. and he started the Phillipsburg Brewing uh, company. And we're going and, to that brewery uh, in September. I was kind of stoked. Are you? Because uh, Tom and Brian and I and our wives are all going out to see Tedeschi Trucks Band play at this other brewery that has a 4,000 seat venue. I don't even know. But they're in Montana. Is that a brewery at that point? <laughs> or just oh, a convention seriously, center? Seriously. Envy fills me. Like jealousy. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. yeah. I love music. Anyway, we're going out there. We're going to see Phillips. We're going to go drink that beer. And we're going to bring you some back, Chris. Well, that would be awesome. This is a question for Teddy. When will you uh, brew with that wheat from Don's? The, the, the two wheats from Don? Um, the turkey red and the Eden? Uh, that's a good question. When they're malted. That's the how much the How answer. much is he going to yield? I mean, how many super totes are we talking? I mean, he needs to have four... At least four full totes to, to make it malted. And he has it. Link just is like, we already have two of your wheats and they're slow selling. Like, what are we going to do with two more? But I, I have a, occasionally used them in small batch for raw. Okay. But yeah. yeah. So then you have two, uh, and a super tote for people who don't know is around 2,000 pounds. Roughly a ton of So piece. you need about uh, 8,000 pounds yeah. of. Yeah, I mean, you know uh, better than yeah, me to, at this to make, point. Yeah. To make that happen. Yeah. I've loaded some of them Gotta totes, Gotta get four baby. tons to make that, make that happen. That's right. Um, all right, so when you go out to drink beer, what are your top three spots? Where do you guys go to drink beer? Uh, Park Inn, probably number one. Yeah, I go to Park Inn number one. They always have good IPAs on tap, including St. Helens. They have your IPA. They have our IPA on tap all the time. And that's by no coincidence. That is because that is our favorite bar, Tim and I both. It is our favorite bar because of proximity to our home and the amazing people that work there and run the place. But they also have three handles that are always a rotating IPA. So you can go in there and you can taste beers from all over the state. He tries to keep it pretty regional, um, if not uh, all within the state. But yeah, that's, that's my top, top place to go have a beer. Um, I have a five-month-old, so I don't go and drink beer other places. <laughs> no, but legitimately, nor- I mean, normally, even before I had a child, I still, I mean, <laughs> the most I generally went out was to the symphony, which is in very close proximity to Whistle Punk, so I would generally go to Whistle Punk. Excuse me, uh, when, the, the, when, when no, you're using... We would come when you're, when to you're, Mountain Lakes an awful lot, actually. You would. You actually yeah. came in here a lot. Yeah. You used to come we in, would come to Mountain Can you put Lakes your pinky down on the microphone when you're talking? Yeah, put it down. Thanks. Uh, you know, I'm they want to help. I'm in uh, Cheney, so I'm mainly places I go out are Wild Bills. Oh yeah, Wild Long Bills. Bar. He liked that. Wild one. Bills used to used to put Mountain Lakes on on a regular yeah. rotation. And they are. Uh, when did you get back the to I just spun the wheel for my birthday, so they have a wheel you spin and that's win right. one twenty one Bills bucks. So that's good. And then uh, there's North Star Taps in. Uh, Cheney as well. Yeah, I went wonderful. out there and met you for a beer, I don't know, a few yeah. weeks ago. And awesome, uh, awesome it's just place. took taken over by a new ownership. Uh, Did Bran- they sell it? Yeah, Brannon and Selena sold it to two great guys uh, named Seth and Jay. 
And they are the new owners, and they're awesome. As, as Cindric puts his reading glasses on now. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is small but very neat handwriting. So I'm going to read this. Like it a says, font. You have been granted by a genie, I don't know, the good luck that your next batch of beer will turn out perfectly. What is that batch of beer you brew? A hazy IPA. I will be a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> Done. For those of you just catching up to the story, Teddy's had some issues getting used to his new brew system, and he's had a couple hazy IPAs not turn out. two full batches of hazy IPA. Nothing now. like throwing 700 Son gallons of, of beer down bitch. the drain. Yeah, I mean, on the good side, though, it's really expensive to brew one of those beers. It's, it's probably only a couple thousand dollars worth of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, I mean, I'm just going to eat Top Ramen for a couple months. It'll be okay. Yep. No worries. Yep. No worries. It'll Tonight our friend Logan got his bike stolen, but you lost seven. Th- I lost my <laughs> dignity. <laughs> yeah. I, no. I think I think it'd be cool to to, to do a, a lambic of some sort. Yes. If the genie could do it without screwing up our system or taking months. Yes. Tim and I awesome. both love having to proper, do a cereal mash and Tim and I love maybe both, a peach lambic. A peach lambic. Tim and I both oh, yeah. love Ooh. fruited lambic like beers, but right Ain't now nobody got right, time for that. Well, no. Right now we just don't have the Ability to, to let a tank go to that and then leave it just and for do. That. And then uh, you're introducing in other yeah, contaminants yeah, that can screw it, and like those, those lactobacillus and all that kind grow, of stuff. But right? as we grow, I think, Tim and I would love to have some dedicated equipment just for Lambic Brewing because uh, a, a framboise would be You delicious. live up on the bluff? Yeah. That's some good yeah. stuff up there. Oh, yeah. Well, folks, it's closing time. We live in a unique region. Eastern Washington and Idaho are two of the country's primary barley growing areas. Many local breweries use locally sourced and craft malted grains, including Mountain Lakes and the Grain Shed. This is cause for celebration, wouldn't you agree? Yaya Brewing Company, together with Link Malt and Coldstream Malt and Grain Company, have announced the first annual Grain Maker Beer and Grain Festival. It will be held on Friday, August 12th from 4 to 8 p.m. at Yaya Brewing Company, and it will feature six brilliant breweries in their tasting room for an evening of live music, food, and eight-ounce pours of specialty beers from such breweries as Holy Mountain Brewing, Bale Breaker, Ravenna Brewing, Varietal Brewing Company, Moonraker Brewing, and Fair Isle Brewing. Each beer is brewed with specialty grain from Clearwater Farms and Holocker Farms, so make sure you get your tickets today. With the connection to that, as part of the festivities, We We Don't Tell Me and Mountain Lakes Brewing Company will be hosting a special live show and podcast recording at Lumberbeard Brewing on Thursday, August 11th, from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m., featuring brewers from the Grain Maker Beer and Grain Festival. We hope you will be able to join us for this special event. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our show for tonight. Thank you. Thanks to our special guest, Teddy Benson of the Grain Shed. Yeah. And to Dave Basaraba and Tim Helton from Mountain Lakes Brewing Company. Yeah. Thanks to our wonderful servers, Brian and Tom. And thanks to all of you for being here. I am Chris Sendrick. Good night and joy to you all.